hey guys this is hetu and welcome or welcome back to tlq labs so guys uh, this is the question i think i have been trying to uh, do this video since very long uh, because uh, i have received multiple request uh, of the similar kind of you know uh, uh, request right uh, wherein um, and 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 believe me this question if you are able to answer it uh, rightly and and with uh, the way it is explained here i think interview will be fully satisfied with your answer right because uh, what what is the intention of the co the ans question right this is not a technical question right this is something that how your team is right how your team is structured in your organization right and why let me tell you why this kind of question generally uh, some sometime interviewer will ask is because if they they think that you uh, do not have the real experience it's it may be just uh, you learnt it and then you just appear for the interview right in that case they might want to do uh, want to just cross check so that uh, based on how you answer this question Uh, which will decide like you know if you are able to answer the way it is supposed to be in industry uh, then then they will come to know okay you have the real experience and then uh, there is no further doubt about it right so that is the reason i think uh, this question have lot of relevance uh, with regards to your selection right and uh, and this is not the very first question generally right it might be uh, it might be the when when the interviewer have certain doubt about uh, your uh, your real experience right and that point of time they might ask this question right so but it's very important that you know this right and then if you answer it uh, there is no further you know questions asked uh, after this right because this is this is not a technical question this is more of a, more of a, you know behavioral or i would say this is more of a um Mm, what do you say experience based question right about uh, something about your team members and uh, something about your uh, working or or day uh, day work right so that's the reason right so let's try to understand this what this question basically is right so explain the role of uh, your agile team members right in etl or data warehousing projects so what actually they, actually they want to know is like uh, you have to explain each of the member in your team in your agile team right so agile team basically as i said that most of the companies now almost 90 plus percentage companies are uh, following the agile methodology right and we have a team called agile team where we have uh, different different people like uh, all, all um, a sets of people right like business analyst and then database engineers and then etl developers and then etl tester also the product manager scrum man scrum master etc right but then you have to actually talk about this if they want to i mean because uh, scrum master is always there there is no change in the rule for that either it is etl testing or it is any kind of uh, software uh, project right it may not necessarily be atl right so that's the reason i have not covered that and even the same thing for the product manager right uh, so but these are the core member of your etl development right or atl delivery right so let's go one by one so the first person uh, from where basically all the requirements comes i mean i will say that this person is the one who actually uh, start the project right uh, like business analyst right sometime they also called as data analyst right or or you know because his role is basically to gather the requirement uh, from the maybe uh, let's say it is from the customer so customer will actually tell what is the etl requirement for uh, uh, for uh, their you know uh, etl or data warehousing projects right so this person is supposed to gather all the requirements and then uh, the same requirement what he gathered from the customers has to be converted into a uh, mapping format right so as i have shown you multiple times uh, there is a mapping document and that is also called as data lineage document right which basically talks about you know what is source what is target what are the different transformation in between source and target right and what is the data type and what is the different name mapping um, all those details right i think i have 
I have already explained you I think you should be uh, able to find in my previous or earlier videos right if not then you just comment comment it I will try to uh, you know uh, explain it one more time if you need right but then uh, but then this is the rule right for the business analyst and business analyst is one person who plays a very critical role because he is the person who is actually front facing the customer and uh, getting all the requirements so it's very important that the business analyst or the data analyst who whoever that person is n gets the right uh, requirement and convert that into the mapping document or the late data lineage uh, document and this is also a requirement basically so this is the final requirement basically and then after this step is done business analyst basically uh, release this particular document for for use uh, for multiple teams right so we have the various team here three teams uh, basically after business analyst we have the data architect ETL developer and then ETL tester right so let's go about the first one so the second person is called data architect right so what is the you what is the role of this data architect here is uh, so this this is more of a you know uh, a few bullet points right so just to cover this so data architect is a person this person is also called as a data modeler guys okay modeler or you can say database database engineer it this person actually uh, wear the hats of multiple role right but then it's a pretty much same person right same person who is actually responsible to uh, to um, uh, define what basically this person does so this person obviously uh, review this mapping document which is basically created by business analyst and then after that this person defines what is the data models right so whether it has to be you know ER model or it has to be dimensional model where we have the fact and dimension table so this person is a architect person who actually have overall knowledge about the target data models and also this are the same person right it depends again right so if it is a huge team and huge project then there will be different setup people are they are called as the database engineer who will actually come and create all the data models or data base objects right for example tables views materialized views indexes etc right on the database right but if it is a small team and then probably the data architect is good enough I mean this person uh, uh, can create all these uh, uh, you know uh, database related objects right uh, uh, but before create they that this person is supposed to define all these data models right how much should be the column size what is the data type etc right all those things and what is the basis of defining all these target models I would say they are target database models you can actually just uh, imagine that this is just uh, you know creating some database objects like uh, tables right uh, tables that uh, this uh, that will be used for the ETL processing right so this person is responsible and the input document is basically the mapping document right so that's why it is it is here in the first step uh, this person uh, basically review it get the clarification if there is any question from the business analyst and then after that proceed with the data model analysis and data model uh, you know creation and uh, all those database related objects if he's, he has to do right so all those task is basically from uh, is done by uh, data architect okay then the third person comes as a ETL developer right so ETL developer is a person so you see the, there is a very common step for data architect ETL developer and the ETL tester guys what is that the very first step basically the same document that is produced by business analyst is reviewed by all these people right and these people obviously can raise the questions concerns or any uh, you know uh, ambiguity in the document right and then uh, business analyst has to go and correct it based on uh, you know uh, based on the confirmation with the customers right so all those things has to happen but essentially all these people are supposed to review the documents mapping document 
for any kind of clarification or any questions right now uh, ETL developers now we already covered with the data architect it's most of uh, most of job is basically uh, in and around about the modeling of the data or the target tables etc right <coughs> and then the ETL developer um, job is to design the the mapping right ETL logic exact ETL logic right so design the ETL logic for extract transform and load this is nothing but the ETL steps extracting the data from the source and then transforming based on the required you know uh, required mapping document right and then load into the target table which is created by the data architect right so this is the second task and the third task is basically after creating this the, this person is supposed to developer is supposed to perform a unit testing and integration testing right so maybe we will cover something about unit integration testing in the later videos but for now you just understand some sort of testing that confirms that the, the developer has whatever developer has coded it working fine right so that is nothing but the unit testing and integration testing right integration is basically um, I would say integrating between multiple modules and making sure that the data is flowing from one to uh, different level for example in ETL uh, what we can say as integration testing is let's say you have the uh, preconditions and then post a script right you are actually running after your job is successfully completed you normally execute certain you know pre steps before the job is starts and after job stops basically so uh, the typical example could be you know uh, dropping the indexes and rebuilding the indexes after loading the table right so this can be one of the example right so that is uh, that is that is you can uh, say that uh, that when end to end this job is actually completed then if everything is happening properly which means integration integration between all this uh, uh, modules are the component is working fine right so this kind of testing is usually done by developer right and the third one uh, I mean fourth person uh, and probably the last person to uh, vali validate before it goes to the production right this job it is basically ETL tester right so ETL tester plays a very very key role here because the ETL person is a uh, ETL uh, ETL tester is a person who is actually gatekeeper I would say right without his permission um, the release cannot happen right until the ETL tester sign off and says that things are working fine um, there is nothing that uh, that can be uh, progressed after that right so the typical role for ETL tester I think I already have explained uh, this in previous videos but let me quickly cover it right <coughs> it's a very high level right so review mapping document this is always common between all three uh, three sets of uh, different people ETL test cases right ETL test cases and get approval from BA why do we need to get the approval from BA so why because BA is the person who can confirm whether you are covering all the aspect of test cases from his requirements or not right so that's the reason it's very important whenever you write the test cases you need to get it approved from the BA or maybe the product manager whoever in your company or hierarchy right the this test cases are always supposed to be approved otherwise this doesn't make any sense because if you are writing test cases executing who actually approved that the test cases are complete or not right might be there is one scenario two scenario that you are missing out right in that case if you are not getting it reviewed then there are chances that you will not execute those cases and later that those, those test cases uh, might have the defects right right so that's very important we get it approval from BA uh, look this is the test case that I have written confirm that right and then third thing is execute this test cases once the build is ready once the job is ready in QA then you can actually start executing the test cases and log the status in test management tool so when I say test management tool it can be Jira it can be LM or it can be it can be any uh, other tool guys right rally or any other tool uh, where basically we try to log the test status of each of these test cases whether it is pass fail or maybe you know uh, uh, blocked or it's uh, blocked in the sense that we can't execute it right now 
or maybe something on hold if you are waiting for some other uh, you know preconditions right so those kind of uh, test stages has to log in test management tool and then finally we have to log the defects as well right because you might find some test cases fail and then those test cases will lead into uh, defects or log uh, or defects or bug right same thing so you have to log those defects or bug uh, and make sure that those bugs are closed before you actually sign off the testing right so this is guys i think briefly i tried to cover i wanted to make sure that you are very comfortable answering this question and uh, uh, i think uh, this is very uh, very generic thing or very very basic thing that you should be knowing right if you are working in industry right and uh, so that's the reason i'm saying this is very important from the interview point of view and uh, so hopefully you got some insight about it right and if uh, believe me if you are able to explain this this many responsibility for each of this team members i think uh, there there is a good chances that they were the the interviewer will be satisfied with, with your answer right all right guys so that's all for this video and uh, i hope that uh, you are enjoying this uh, mm, you know um, videos right i again started doing some more and more videos because of a uh, uh, lot of request guys okay and uh, do suggest me if you want me to do video on some special topics or something that you really uh, faced in your recent interviews right and that will be a good thing uh, right so based on that i'll wait for your feedback right and uh, that's all uh, i will say that uh, i'll see you soon with the next video until then happy learning and god bless you bye